Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Sunday morning at the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. All of you watching by way of YouTube, Facebook, and the worldwide internet, we're glad to have you with us this morning as well, and we hope at some point you'll get to come here and be with us in person for our morning service every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We hope it'll be every Sunday morning with Sunday school and everything before long, according to what this pandemic does to us. But hopefully it won't be long, and we're certainly looking forward to that day. Let's all stand together and sing, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, or are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified, or are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside your garments, lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean, will be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Once again, are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Brother Tom, come on and lead us in prayer and tell us all about what's happening. Amen. Isn't it good to be in God's house on this beautiful Sunday morning? Uh, praise God. It is good to be with God's wonderful people. Uh, Brother Joe this morning is at Victory Baptist uh, out on the other side of Augusta. And they are honoring Brother Larry Brown this morning at Brother C.T.'s church. And so that's where Brother Joe is this morning. But we're here gathered in the lovely name of Christ for those that are joining us by way of internet. Thank you for being with us this morning. We trust that you'll be blessed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for being in God's house today. Father, we love you. Lord, we one more time want to thank you, God, for the opportunity to wake up and breathe your air. Uh, Lord, to serve the King of kings, the precious lamb that gave his life for us, that redeemed us. And Lord, we just want to say to God, be the glory, great things you've done. Lord, I thank you for every answered prayer, God, from your people, God. And Lord, we thank you this morning for God's people, Lord. Lord, that prayed us through, we want to thank you for your good mercy. Uh, Lord, we know today we'd be lost and helpless without you. Lord, we ought to be in hell. But today, hallelujah, we're redeemed by the good grace of God, set free in the marvelous love of our Savior, and we give you glory. Bless our pastor today. Lord, I pray you touch and anoint Brother Mike here in just a little bit. God, breathe on him. God, would you please fill this place with thy mighty power. For all you do, Lord, we're going to give you the eternal glory and say thank you. For it's in your holy, lovely name we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being in God's house. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are looking forward uh, to the day we get to be back to, I guess, semi-normal, whatever that is, and have Sunday school, have our Wednesday night um, youth activities and youth services. 
And until that day, we're just going to continue to be faithful. Let me remind you, this Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we will have in-person worship right here in the auditorium. And Brother Joe will be here Wednesday night starting a new series. And the staff guys are going to rotate, and we're going to follow Brother Joe in this series. Looking forward to Wednesday night and Brother Joe kicking this off in Revelation. So I encourage you to be here Wednesday night. If there's ever a day that uh, we should preach out of Revelation, we're living in it. Amen. And so we're going to walk through it uh, with the staff on Wednesday nights, uh, preaching and teaching from the book of Revelation, and Brother Joe will kick it off Wednesday night, 7 p.m., so be here. want to recognize today all the grandparents on this Grandparents' Day. So if you are a proud grandparent, no doubt you are, all the grandparents, please stand this morning. Let's give them a hand. What a blessing. Thank you. I read a quote a couple months ago uh, that was very pertinent to our day in which we live, and it said, you can raise your child and spoil your grandchildren, or you can spoil your child and raise your grandchildren. That's right. <laughs> And there's a lot of truth in that. Amen. And I want to say I thank God for a mom and dad that raised me and trained me. And I, I thank God for every time my dad set the plan down and disciplined me and put things in order. It never hurt me. And I give God the glory for uh, all the grandparents here today. It is a blessing to honor you. At the end of service, we have some young men that will be at the doors. And we have a little... A uh, gift for you for a free meal for your grandchildren uh, at Cracker Barrel. So make sure as a grandparent you get one of those as you go out today. Uh, one more announcement. Love is in the air. And there is a young couple in this church that were engaged just a couple weeks ago. And so would you help me congratulate Miss Alicia and Brother James on their engagement. Congratulations, Alicia. Congratulations to you. And they will be uh, tying the knot in May, May 13th, correct? 15th. May 15th. They'll be tying the knot. And uh, we are hoping to make an announcement soon. Brother Jerry, come have a spe another congregation. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand once again. It'd be a shame to sit on this song. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages and His praises reign. Glory in the highest and shall and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior is my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises. God. Remain standing, if you will. We're going to do a chorus. We can't turn around and fellowship like we like to with all that's going on. But you can at least, like Brother Joe said, nod at each other, smile, do something. Let folks know we're glad they're here. We love them. We love the Lord. Let's do, uh, of course, the family of God. About the key of elf. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been watched. In the fountain 
Lynched by his blood Joy has Jesus As we fell on the sod I'm so glad The family of God Let's do it one more time I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God I've been washed in the fountain Lens by His blood Joy heirs with Jesus As we travel the sun For I'm part of the family The family of God And that God is so good God is so good God is so good He's so good to me You know, it wouldn't hurt if we just raised our hands while we sing a verse of that and praise the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. So good. Amen. He saved my soul. And one more time without the music, just God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Amen. Brother Tom, y'all may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. Right before Spencer comes to sing for us this morning, it's, uh, it's soon enough, so I'll make the announcement now. Congratulations to Landon and Paige. She said yes last night. <laughs> and I am finally getting my daughter. Congratulations to Landon and Paige. Spencer, you come sing for us.
Spencer's still single. He's taking applications for <laughs> anybody who wants to submit one today. We'll be glad to take it. This man I'm about to introduce you to you is no stranger to our people here. We love him with all our heart. Our preacher loves him. He's one of the, not one of, to me he's the greatest bass singer that ever sang. And if not the best, he's close to it. But I think he's the best. I, I don't like these people that can sing, preach, you know, do everything. I can't, I can't even play the radio without getting static. I mean, <laughs> it's terrible. But anyway, no stranger to end up singing with the inspirations for 40 some odd years. I think he started when he was five, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Brother Mike Holcomb. Brother Mike, come right on. I wasn't five, but I was close. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Say amen. amen. Well, I tell you, with what has been going on in our world, I'm glad to be most anywhere other than the hospital or the jail. Amen. I appreciate the opportunity of being here. It's good to see all of you. Thank God for you. And uh, we're, we're delighted to have this opportunity to come this way. Brother Joe had been talking to me about coming to be here because of what had been going on and everything canceled. You know how that was. March 16th, for the next three months, everything was wiped out. It was gone. And uh, I've been on the road for 50 years. Yep, 50 years. And uh, I've never in the last 50 years spent three months at home, ever. My wife and I have been married 44 years, and there was time during there. She looked around and she said, Is there not somewhere you can go? <laughs> yeah, amen. She, she needed the prayers and you needed the practice right there. I'm, but uh, we're glad to have the opportunity to be here. And it worked out. I was uh, scheduled to be somewhere else. And Brother Joe came and we sang at a church in uh, Durham, North Carolina about six weeks ago. And this had just, this date for this few days had canceled the day before, or a couple of days before. And uh, talked to him and he said, I said, my September 13th just canceled. He said, really? I said, it did. He said, that'll work out really good. <laughs> and so... Uh, we're glad to be here. Praise the Lord for uh, all of you and for his blessings and his goodness. You know, I found out during this time, and, and I'm not trying to be critical of anybody, but I found out during this time I can make it without the NFL. I can make it without the NBA. I can make it without Major League Baseball. I can make it out without all that other sports and all that kind of stuff, but I can't make it without Jesus. I can't make it without his fellowship. I can't make it without his presence. And I can't make it without the people of God that are kin to me. Amen. Those that are saved by the grace of God, been born again on our way to heaven, that's the family. And I can't make it without them. But I appreciate the opportunity of assembling together with like believers, brothers and sisters in God's house. And uh, it's good to see all of you today. If you have your Bible, I'd like for you to turn with us, please, uh, two places, just for a few little while. Acts chapter number 5 and the Gospel of Luke chapter number 8. It came to my attention. By that I mean I was told. It came to my attention that there is one word that is used in the New Testament only in two places. And it's a word that means something to most all of us. It's the word somebody. It seemed like in the world in which we live today, everybody wants to be a somebody. If it were not that way, things wouldn't be like they are. Amen. You'll get it in a minute. But the word somebody is only used in the two passages of Scripture in the New Testament that I told you about. Acts chapter number 5 and the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 8. But they are used totally different. We'll find out how. 
by the help of the Lord. In Acts chapter number 5, verse number 34, and the Bible said, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Tutus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught." But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Hallelujah goes right in there. Lest haply you be found even to fight against God. And I found out you can't whoop him. Amen. Does not matter what you have, what grievance you have with God, you're not going to win. If you're on the opposite side on him on any decision or any direction, you're not going to win. If you fight against God for the will of your life or for anything other than that, you're not going to be on the winning side. It's only when we agree with God and walk in his word and walk in his will that we have victory in our lives. In Luke chapter number 8, Gospel of Luke chapter number 8, verse number 43, the Bible said, And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me. <laughs> mm. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. I want to preach to you for a little while on this thought. When a nobody became a somebody. I'm liking it already. When a nobody became a somebody. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this privilege, for this opportunity. Thank you for all the good things that you've done for us, for every good, every perfect gift you've given. We thank you for life and that more abundantly because of Jesus and through his shed blood. We ask you now to help us to declare him. Oh God, how I pray for a double portion of thy spirit to be upon us, to make us to be that instrument of God that you could use to bring honor and glory to his name and to cause others to be able to see him in such a way as they would be drawn unto him. We'll thank you and bless you and praise you for what you accomplish. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. There is great contrast between these two events that are described in the scriptures. The first describes a man who evidently thought of himself very highly. A man with a famed reputation who boasted himself to be a person of value and influence, who tried to take advantage of his popularity and his fame. But the second we read about is a little lady that had a very humble person, very little cause for anyone to even notice her. But in my estimation, she became a hero of the faith when she became a child of the king. She was a nobody who became 
of somebody. In the first, we read about Gamaliel, the Pharisee, who was one of the Apostle Paul's teachers, who was warning the rest of the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin to be careful about the decision that they were going to make and what they were going to do with Peter and James and John and the other disciples who were preaching Jesus and who were raising up some kind of proclamation about the gospel to a lost and dying world. Having been threatened by the Pharisees, they were stirring up people against their religious leadership. Gamaliel made it known that the man Judas had tried that insurrection already years before, and it had come to naught. Apparently, Judas had highly thought of himself and had boasted or bragged about his affluence, his ability, his affirmation. He was thinking of himself to be praiseworthy. Does that sound anything like Baptist to you? As I said a while ago, I've been traveling over 50 years and I've learned a little something about Baptists. I found out there are some of the only people I know of that can strut sitting down. That fella got it over there. It seems in the day in which we live, people think of themselves much more highly than we ought to. Our opinions seem to think they are heavy and that they're merited for some reason. But the real deal is your opinion really doesn't matter. My opinion really does not matter. It's only what God says that matters. We are nothing more than dirt dressed up. Amen. Especially if we're not saved by the grace of God, there's nothing good about us at all. We're nothing more than just unrighteous and wicked and vile. Our righteousness, the very best we can do is nothing more than filthy rags in the eyes of God. And so when we come to ourselves and we come to the opinion that we matter, that we're something about us that really makes a difference, it's wrong. Because the only thing that makes a difference to us or to the world or to those around about us is what we've done with Jesus and how big he is in us. We've never been made somebody until we come to know Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. Judas had rounded up about 400 followers. That's a pretty good-sized church. And they'd made some stir among the people. Matter of fact, there'd been some stink raised. But it all came to naught. He was no longer a problem. And neither were his followers. He had become just a bad memory. He was a somebody that was now nothing more than a nobody. He'd relied upon himself. He'd relied upon his intellect. He'd relied upon his abilities. He'd relied upon his works, his voice, his reason. He'd even relied upon his associates. But he found out the hard way that he wasn't able to do what he thought he could do. He'd found out the hard way that what he wanted was not what was needed. And Judas died a lost cause. Oh my. How many have done the same thing in a long life's journey? Died a failure. Died a lost cause. Though many of them fought for what they really believed in. Many of them believed in the wrong things. Many have gone to hell paving their way with good intentions. Amen. I think of a man right now that I could tell you about that thought he was going to take over the world because he viewed him and his people as being superior to every other race on earth. But he wound up blowing his brains out because he found out that he wasn't. Amen. There's none of us righteous, no, not one. Some of you looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate right now. You don't know which way to go. But the fact of it is, none of us are righteous, no, not one. We've all lost our way. We've all gone astray. We've all gone away from the ways of God and gone away from the book and gone away from what God would have for us and tried to do it our own way. The reason the world is in such a mess, the reason the church is in such a mess, the reason the nation is in such a mess is because we have gone our way instead of God's way. 
Those that would try to take over our world today and change it to suit themselves want to do away with anything that has reference to God or anything that has reference to being Christian or anything that has reference to being good in days past. They want to bring in something that will control everybody the same way. And the only one who can control and do it right is Jesus. Titus said, not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The book of Ephesians, the Bible tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because we're only his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before had before ordained that we should walk in them. The Bible also tells us in the book of Proverbs, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. We're headed down a road of destruction trying to do things our way by what we feel, by what we know, by what we've been taught. If we've not been taught by the word of God. Amen. I hope that sinks deep somewhere. If we've not been taught by the word of God, our direction is going to lead nothing but to destruction. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. But, I love that little word right there. For the wages of sin is death. If you want to wind up going to hell, you have to pay your own way. The wages of your sin will wind you up in death and hell. But, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you really want to be a somebody, you have to be born again, born from above, that we might inherit life everlasting. We must be careful that our works are directed by the Holy Ghost, not by what we think, nor by how we feel, but being led by the hand of the Lord. Because anything that we do on our own without his help is going to fail. It's going to be just like Judas works. It's going to come to naught. Because life has never been about you. It's always been about him. He made all things by himself and for himself. Amen. Somebody's shooting at me, sure as a word. All things are made by him and for him. He who is the author and the finisher of our faith made us whatsoevers and whosoevers. Anything that is not of faith, according to the word of God, is sin. Without Jesus, we're nobodies. But for a little while, I wanted to go to the other picture in Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8, this little lady had had a really rough time of it. She had been deathly sick for 12 years with a blood issue disease. She had gone to every doctor. She had gone to every hope that she had and spent all her living that she might get better but to no avail. She had probably tried most everything that had been recommended to her and was none the better for it. She had really come to the end of herself and she'd come to the the failures of the past and to realize that she wasn't getting any better. But then somebody began to recommend Jesus to her. I don't know who they were and I don't really know all that they said but she'd been so sick for so long that evidently somebody had come by and said there is one that's come from Nazareth that goes about doing good The eyes of the blind are being opened. The deaf ears are being opened. The mouths that cannot speak are being able to talk. Those that are lame are being up and walking. I've even heard where there was one that had been dead for four days and he got up out of the tomb because of this one named Jesus who goes about doing good. 
I don't know about you, but I'm really glad that before I was ever born, they started recommending Jesus to me. I'm really glad that somebody had me on their mind, had me on their heart, and they began to pray for me before I even knew what prayer was all about. And they began to recommend Jesus to me that he was able to save, he was able to keep, he was able to heal, he was able to change, he was able to do what needed to be done in my life, no matter what the circumstance or the situation was. I'm really, glory to God. Y'all can sit there if you want to. I can have a spell with myself. I'm really glad somebody began to recommend Jesus to me. Evidently, this woman had had somebody, maybe more than one, that had come and recommended the Lord to her because it built faith within her. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Somebody had been telling her about the Lord Jesus Christ and about how good He was, and it sunk right down into her heart, and she came to the place that she said, I know. Not I hope so, not I think so, not maybe so, but I know that if I can just but touch the hem of his garment that I'll be made whole. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Well, how is that going to happen? She was so weak and she was so feeble. How was she going to get to where she could touch the hem of his garment? He made it a little easier for her. He came by close to where she was. I, mm, glory to God. I'm glad that July 22nd, 1964 on a Wednesday morning in an old-fashioned church in the hills of North Georgia, the Lord made it a little easier for me when he came by close to where I was and he began to speak to my heart and he began to woo me and to draw me and to show me that I was exactly what, that he was exactly what I needed. Amen. He came by close to where she was. Oh, but she's a nobody. Nobody really cares. She's been sick for so long that them Baptist folks didn't want to go by and knock on her door and see how she was. Amen. Her old me goes right there. She was a nobody. She didn't have anything left. She spent all her money. They couldn't inherit anything from her. They couldn't get any gifts from her. They couldn't expect any pay from her. Hello? Hello? How was she going to get there? Somehow she made her way downtown where she had heard that Jesus would be passing by. And somehow she got to a place where she realized that if he'll just get by here close enough, I'll reach out and touch him. Amen. I can't tell you how. I just know that I was there when he came by. <laughs> Glory to God. He set up the appointment and I was there and he came by. Amen. And he walked close to where I was that I might be able to reach out and touch him. She got to that place and I can see that little lady now. She's so weak, she's so feeble that it took her longer than it did everybody else. But she got to that place, sat down and made herself available for him. Glory to God. You won't get saved out in the honky tonks and the bars. You won't get saved out in the world. But you need to get to where you can hear the word of God. The Bible says we are begotten by the word of God. God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen. I'm not talking about foolish preaching. But I'm talking about preaching that has the power of God and the unction of the Holy Ghost on it. I'm glad I was brought up in that kind. Well, the old men of God reared back and let her fly. They preached it as it was to people as they are. Yeah. Instead of trying to talk to us about how to spend our money, try to tell us about how to lay up treasures in heaven. By getting a hold of Jesus, by letting him be Lord of our lives. This woman got to the place and as she sat down, here comes a whole throng of people. The Bible said he was thronged about. There was a great crowd that was with him. Peter, James, John, all of the disciples were there. And there was another crowd all around them. See, everybody wanted to see him do something. As long as he didn't do it to them. Uh-oh. Everybody wants somebody else to get blessed and their life to be changed for the better except them. See, most of us don't want to change anything. 
we've got so comfortable and we've got so engrossed in who we are and who we think we are that we don't want God to really do anything for us so that we won't have to change. Uh-oh. Some of them look like they want their offering back already. This woman was looking for a change in her life. I was looking for a change in my life. I was totally miserable the way I was. Conviction had come upon my heart and made me to realize at any moment I was going to fall headlong into hell, deservingly so. I was afraid to go to sleep at night, afraid I wouldn't. I'd wake up in hell and I'd never see my parents and my grandparents anymore. They all testified that they were saved on the way to glory, but I knew I wasn't. This woman was in the crowd as they were passing by. And many of them were pushing, they were shoving, they were trying to get to where Jesus was because they wanted to see something that was going to go on that day. And that little lady by faith reached out and touched the hem of his garment and immediately was made whole. Immediately she was made whole. I can see her now as she sat back. Tears began to flow down her face because she ain't never felt that good before. Everything was made clear. Everything was made right. Everything was made good in her life. All in one moment of time. She didn't know how to act. She didn't know how to behave. She didn't know what to do. Neither did I. When I got saved by the grace of God, I didn't know what to do. All I knew was where I had been sick and where I had felt so bad and where I had been so condemned and where I had had such a big hole in my heart, there wasn't there anymore. But there had been a peace that had come into my life that had changed me from the inside out. I had been a, made a new creature in Christ Jesus the Lord. All things had passed. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know what to say or what to do. <laughs> that little woman didn't know what to do. But Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? Now, you can't tell me he didn't know who had touched him. He who knows everything, the end from the beginning, he knows it all. He, he knew who it was. But it was time for her to testify. If thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. It was time for her to testify. Until we tell somebody about the goodness of God and how he has changed our life, it's not really made complete. Amen. Nobody said anything. I think she was so overwhelmed by what had happened to her, she didn't know what to do. But when nobody else said anything, Peter, James, John, all them boys are standing around and said, I'm afraid he's been out in the sun too long. Master, Lord, uh, everybody here is trying to touch you. They all want to get to where you are. They all want to be known what is going on. And, and now you say, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me. <laughs> A little while ago, she was a nobody. A little while ago, nobody wanted anything to do with her. A little while ago, she was nothing. A little while ago, she was just a piece of dirt. But the King of kings and the Lord of lords has now called her a somebody. Whoop, glory to God. He's made a difference in her. Virtue has gone out of her, uh, out of him, and she has been made whole. It's time for her to testify. When she couldn't hide it no longer, when she couldn't hold it in any longer, she come and fell down. That means she hit her knees in front of him, and she began to tell the whole story. I used to be sick. I used to be bad. I used to be this. I used to be that. But now that I've touched the hem of your garment, I've been made whole, and I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. Somebody will touch me. For virtue's gone out of me. She began to testify of the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, and how he had made difference in her. 
Now, I don't know how the rest of them begin to act, but I can almost see the master of the Lord Jesus as he looks down and smiles. He looks at this little lady realizing how rough of time she's had so far, but now things are going to be different for her. Now things are not what they used to be. He looks down and smiles at her, and he says, Daughter, A few minutes ago, she was a nobody. Then she became a somebody. And now the Lord God of heaven is calling her daughter. He, ain't, he owns her for his very own. She's not just a nobody anymore. She's not just a somebody. But now she's a child of the king. He owns her as his very own. Hallelujah. I'm glad along this journey of life, there's been times that he's picked me up and squeezed me good and said, you belong to me. Amen. Times when it seemed like nobody else cared, he would say, I still love you. I care for you. I'm not ever going to leave you. I'm not ever going to forsake you. I'm going to go with you all the way. You can depend on the fact you belong to me. A nobody became a somebody. Then she became a child of the king. And Jesus said, daughter, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without having faith in knowing who he is and that he'll do exactly what he said he will do, your life has not been changed. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs> Thank God there is a peace that passeth all understanding. <laughs> Even when the storms are raging all around us, when we don't know what we're going to do, when we don't understand what's taking place, when we can't do what we used to do, when life is not normal anymore, then we can still know with God. There is peace. There is peace with God, and there's the peace of God. When you know that you know that you know your life has been changed forever. When a nobody became a somebody. I'm glad that my name is recorded in the book of life in heaven. How about you? You know what it says? Somebody got saved. Amen. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. Somebody got saved. Somebody was made my child. That somebody is an heir and a joint heir with all that God has. Not because we deserve it. Not because we've earned it. No, because he gave it. And it still belongs to him. Amen. I wonder today how many of you can raise up your hand and say, Preacher, I've been made a somebody. I've been made the child of the king. I know that I know that I know I am saved by the grace of God. I know my name's in the book of life in heaven. I know I get to go because he said I would get to go. And I know along this journey of life, no matter what may take place, I'm in his hand. And I can trust him to bring peace to my heart and peace to my life and do for me what needs to be done, no matter what the circumstance. Amen. When a nobody becomes a somebody. <laughs> I don't know where it's helped you or not, but it's done a lot for me. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet, please. The Bible tells us that there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What's that mean? It means that the only plan God has for salvation for you or for anybody else is in the plan of redemption in the Lord Jesus Christ. The only plan God ever had was for you to surrender your heart, your life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. 
This little lady had come down to the end of her way. She'd come down to the end of it all. She'd lost her hope. She'd lost her money. She'd lost everything that she had and was none better until she met the master. And then he got her to testify. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you can take that to heart, if you can believe that, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He claimed her. And now she's in glory. With him. <laughs> mm, I don't know about you, but that's where I'm headed. I'm glad I get to go. I'm as good as in glory as if I was already there. Why? Because he's there. Amen. And the Bible says I get to go where he is. Yes. I wonder how many of you today, heads bowed and eyes closed for just a moment, how many of you could say, Preacher, I can go into heaven. I know it. I know it's real. And I get to go. And I'm raising my hand to testify to that fact. How many of you can do that? I get to go. Amen. Amen. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody looking around, don't want to embarrass you. Is there somebody here that say, Preacher, I don't know. I don't know that I get to go to heaven. It's not settled in my heart and my mind that I get to go to heaven. I'm not sure that I've been made a somebody in the eyes of God. Anybody like that today? Anybody at all? We don't want to embarrass you. We want to pray for you. Anybody at all? Say, preacher, I, I just don't know. Amen. God bless you. Maybe you'd just like to praise the Lord for his goodness. Maybe you'd just like to say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Every day is not enough to say thank you. Every hour of every day is not enough to say thank you. We all deserve to be in hell right now. But the grace of God is still in operation. And we have the opportunity to say thank you. Lord, I'm saved. Thank you that I'm a part of the family of God. Thank you that I'm going to make it to heaven. Thank you that you've been so good to me. Whatever your need is, there's an altar open down here. There's somebody that will pray with you. If you've not been made a somebody, God wants to do that for you. If you have family members who have not been made a somebody, maybe you need to come talk to the Lord in their behalf. Pray for them. Whatever your need is, God's able. Just as he came by for that little lady, he'll come by for you. He's promised that he would. He's knocking right now, wanting somebody to step out by faith and do what God would have them to do. Whatever the Lord's leading you to do, do that right now while we while the song's being sung and played. Once I was caught in the rags of my sin. I was wretched and poor, lost and lonely within. But in wondrous compassion, the King yes. of all kings, in pity and love, the Creator is wings. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the king. Boy, if you're not a child this morning, you can be. Jesus is calling. He longs to touch you. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can say, Praise God, praise God. I'm a child. 
Praise God. Aren't you glad this morning you've been made a child of the King? Glad day, glad day.